Hi everyone, I'm Logan from FanAmp, and I'm here with the Pit Lane Twins, Virginia and Desiree. Welcome you two, we're so excited to have you on board. Mm-hmm. And it was a pleasure. Okay. So we've got a couple interview questions today, basically to get to know you a little bit better and introduce you to our FanAmp audience, and for you guys to introduce us to your audience. So let's get right into it. Um, my first question is just, how did you get into Formula One? How'd you find out about it? It's pretty simple, but everyone would love to know the backstory. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, that's a very common question we get asked, and I always say the same thing, and it's it's a pretty funny story, I think. So, <clears throat> we started to watch F1 when we were like 14 years or so, but it wasn't on a, on a voluntary basis, to be honest. So, at that time, we only had one TV in our household, household, and our father basically ruled the channels and decided what to watch on a Sunday afternoon, and obviously Formula One was on. So we sat there with, with him, and actually we were just waiting for him to fall asleep from the engine sound, so then we could uh, switch the TV channel to horseback riding. And that tactic, um, yeah, it, it was quite successful from time to time, but of course we had to uh, like kill the minutes uh, with him and watch Formula One. So these were the first touch points with F1, and it, it took us another... 10 years or so to really fall in love with the sport and travel to a race. So the first one we traveled to was um, Barcelona in 2018. And since then, yeah, the this, this sport, this sport hooked us. And yeah, a few uh, years later, we started the account. Wow. Did you guys uh, do equestrian or were you just, did you just enjoy watching it? We were also equestrians. Yeah, we both still have the horses. So we have been horse girls since, like, f- we've been, we were five years or so. So, um, yeah, we just loved that sport so much. And, of course, we wanted to watch it on TV as well. Yeah. <laughs> I love that the show that uh, your F1 was kind of competing with was equestrian, horse race. Not horse racing, was it? Or was it? Um... It was um, show jumping or dressage show riding. Jump. So our, um, yeah, our... Life has always been about, about horsepower. May it be like the real horse or horsepower in, in the form of cars. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Who did your dad support when he used to watch it with you guys? It was, I think it was Michael, wasn't he? Probably, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, th- I think he was always for Ferrari or a German uh, driver. And, and he also loves red cars, so it probably was Ferrari. Yeah. <laughs> Did you like Sebastian Vettel at all, or no? Don't th- I, I, I'm not sure if he yeah, supported me Sebastian. Me neither. I mean, basically, he wasn't like he wasn't a diehard fan, to be honest, because he fall asleep. You, you know, he just watched yeah. the start of the race, and then ah, oh, okay, the engine sounds. They are a very good lullaby song, and just mm-hmm. fell, f- fell asleep, and that was our luck. <laughs> That's hilarious. Have you guys been to a race with your dad yet, or no? We went, I think it was 2009, to the qualifying in Hockenheim. That was no, a... Nürburgring. Nürburgring, yeah. correct, Nürburgring. So that was a birthday present or so, I think, for him. And then we said, okay, we, like, we are going as the whole family, like, also with our mother. <clears throat> and we accompanied him to be there uh, on the grandstand. Uh, but we didn't really like it. It was very cold also, and it was very, very noisy. So by that time they had the old uh, engines and of course that was louder and we didn't have in any earplugs with us. So it was it was loud and it was cold. So yeah, not a good we didn't really like it. <laughs> no, not a great first introduction to it. <laughs> um, I know that you guys are getting into Formula E as well. I was kind of wondering when and how you started getting into that. So um, you've got to know that we are very interested in like environmental topics and how to live sustainable so we always had like an idea of what formula e is but we didn't really follow it to be honest because i think it wasn't even shown on german television i don't i don't quite remember i mean formula one was always like uh, number one for us and uh, we had we're watching it um, on one certain channel and they show formula e on another channel so you yeah, of course, you also have to know like when 
the race is on in qualifying, etc. But it's not very popular here in Germany. Formula One, I mean, Formula One is still not so popular, but Formula E is definitely less. And um, I mean, like last year, early, no, actually in 2022, we thought, hmm, what else could we do than uh, covering Formula One and posting content, content about it? And then, of course, as I said, we are very interested in su sustainability topics. And we thought, OK, Formula E is also a cool racing series. We could um, try that as well. But we didn't really get into it. And then um, someone from Formula E messaged us if we want to collaborate with them in the 2023 season. And this was like a dream come true because we always had thought of, ah, we could actually do something with Formula E, but we didn't know how to approach it. And then they made the first step and make it very easy for us to just say yes. Um, and so last year we, we watched the races and traveled to, to races as well. So it was very easy, I must say, to get into it. I don't know how you feel about that, Desiree. But I think now, yeah, like I think we watched the first two races of the season now and I already know all the drivers, etc. So, <laughs> I mean, that's the first step always to know yeah. the drivers and the teams and they have 22 drivers so two more than in formula one um so yeah yeah that's great i i'm slowly getting into it as well i don't have like the streaming service here right now while i'm at school to watch it which is kind of like my only setback with it but last year just at the tail end of the season i started kind of watching it but i'm still mm -hmm. i'm still a little bit behind on kind of learning the teams and the drivers but it's so interesting how it's it's so different from Formula One. The sounds and kind of the format of the races, it's it's very mm -hmm. interesting to kind of compare and contrast them. Yeah, I must say that I also love the differences to F1. They just, they don't try to copy F1. They try to come up with a completely different concept, also in terms of fan engagement. That's what we have experienced at the races. It's so, dif it's so different, you're so close to the drivers actually. Like you can celebrate with them on the podium so this is so so different to F1, like where the drivers are like uh, miles away from you and you see it, you know, um, from yeah. so far away. But there you are, you can be like in the, in the first row um, down at the stage and see how they celebrate. So that's very, very cool concept, definitely. That is very interesting. And it's just growing in popularity as well in the past, like two years, really, I would say. Um, mm -hmm. People are starting to get into it. And I really think that it's because they make it so accessible and easy for fans to kind of be a part of the experience, whereas Formula One is so elite and exclusive. So maybe F1 yeah. should start kind of taking a page out of Formula E's book in that respect. Yes, yes, absolutely. That would be my wish as well. Yeah. So they can, they can learn from each other. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I guess my next question, which kind of leads off of that, is what is the story behind starting your mission, Fans for Fans? You guys are so, for the fans, so fan-based, and I feel like all of your content is targeted so that everyone kind of feels part of it. It's mm -hmm. it's very Formula E of you guys, <laughs> um, where you make it so that everyone kind of feels a part of the experience, which is amazing. So I was wondering, what's the story behind you guys starting that, and where did you feel there was like a gap that you wanted to fill? Yeah, so, so I think we first noticed that in mid-2021, when we were in, in, in Spielberg, and that was also the time when we first really posted about our racing experiences on IG. I mean, we started the account in 2019, but it was more like a personal photo album that was accessible for everyone on social media. But in 2021, we took that more serious. And I think that was also the time when we realized that no team or TV station or any magazine um, was showing what it's like for fans being on a racetrack or meeting drivers, etc. like sharing the whole experiences and not only like the TV coverage, the interviews, etc. And I think what was also missing on social media at that time was like how the fans really feel about something happens to a driver during the race or what it's like during the summer break, uh, etc. There were like meme pages and also a little bit of video content, but that didn't reflect where we wanted to place ourselves or how we felt. Um, and at the same time, I also think that there was also a lot of content that was determined 
by the TV operators, by the media and the teams, etc. So it was all like from professionals who don't live in this fan world anymore, who see it all from a professional perspective. And they are not that close um, to the fans anymore. Uh, and that's where we, where, where we wanted to place um, ourselves so that we know like what fans really wanted to see and how they feel, etc. And that's why we came up with the con set fans for fans so we wanted to deliver fan based content or fan related content from fans to fans and um, that's why I also always ask ourselves the questions like what does a fan get out of your our content where can we add value and um, I think that was the right time because I think at that time no, like the, the influencer industry or the content, content creator industry in Formula One, it wasn't, it wasn't there. And now it, it really grow. And I think that, that we like put a milestone or like we were at the beginning of that. Huh? The early birds. Yeah, we were the early birds <laughs> because we thought it works in so many industries, like in fashion, fitness, etc. And why shouldn't it work in Formula One or in motorsports? I love that. And when I started watching Formula One, I guess like three years ago now too, you guys were kind of the first people that I really started watching on TikTok and on Instagram. And I loved seeing your race experiences because I always wondered what it was going to be like to go to a race, like what grandstands are like, where you can get driver autographs, which you guys are masters at actually. So I think we're going to have to give the fans some tips on that later on. But mm -hmm. I really loved your content. It was so tailored to, like you said, um, content from fans for the fans and yeah you guys definitely like created that milestone and now people are kind of I guess taking inspiration from what you both started which has been amazing to watch and just to watch you guys grow as well it's so deserved because your content is amazing and funny your your um skits are so funny mm, yeah yeah thank you very much <laughs> yeah, yeah I mean and as you said um in the beginning um like we know we know that only one percent of the fans ever attend a race live and but so many dream of it and that's why we're also running those giveaways and competition for example for f1 tickets because we want to fulfill the dream uh, of others which make us makes us happy at the same time and i think that also a little bit sets us apart it's not only the content but also the giveaways we try to give the fans that support us something back um yeah, because we know, for example, also that many of many of the people want like a signed cap from from their favorite driver, and we we are the masters of meeting drivers. And for us, it's more about the moment um, we spend with the drivers, not not only like the cap we get out of it. Um, so if if we get the caps, we want to give our fans something back, and um, I think they they really appreciate that. I think so. I think that's such a selfless thing to do. And like you said, you appreciate the moment, but I know so many people would appreciate the moment and the cap, <laughs> probably myself <laughs> included. Um, do you guys have any caps or do you kind of try and give them all away? Or any, I guess, like signed merchandise? We do have, um, there's, oh, there's one signed Lewis cap I still have, but I got it from someone else. And, and, then, and, and I don't have that anymore because I, I gave it away to another fan um because because I, I just thought i could get a cap like 10 times a year or very often a year and for for, for another fan it, it means so 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 much more mm -hmm. and i mean we, we also have that uh signed picture of us with lewis from speedwork 2019 which means the world to us and that's that enough picture. i mean <laughs> yeah it's like enough for us yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, you guys have gotten so many signed caps and pictures. I feel like pictures are almost more more meaningful than the cap. And like you said, yeah. a cap or a different piece of merchandise or any item from any race that you can give to a fan that doesn't have the chance to go is kind of an incredible way to connect you with them and connect them to the sport as well. So I love that that's kind of what you guys do and you prioritize that. You guys have been to a bunch of races now. How many races have you been to in total, do you think? I think like have 15. A I think it's about 15. Yeah. 15 race attendances, but not 15 different race tracks. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. Um, 
I was kind of wondering what has been your most exciting experience since becoming a creator in the motorsport industry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a very, very difficult question because there are many like once in a lifetime moments. But if I have to pick one, I think that moment is not like a creator specific moment, but a fan moment, um, which was meeting Lewis uh, in 2022. As Desiree said, there was this picture of us with him from 2019 in, in Spielberg uh, that the Mercedes team took of us and uploaded on Instagram. And that was our profile picture for a very, very long time because it was just the moment to be to be on the on, on the channel of our favorite team, obviously. So <clears throat> we printed that picture out and took us took it literally it to every, every race. single race because we always hoped to meet Lewis, <laughs> tell him yeah. the story of this picture, and let him sign it. So and then in 2022, when we were in Austin, this moment happened finally. So he and we. Yeah, we literally had uh, a private audience with him. So you know that he's very well secured by his bodyguard, etc. And that there are many fans who want to meet him. And we had that moment of be being with him alone. Um, and speaking to him, I think it was just two minutes or so. It feels like an eternity when you're in that moment. But like, when you look back at it, it was maybe one and a half minute or so. Um, so uh, I told him the story of this picture, he signed it, etc. And I, I said that like that picture was actually the best moment of, our, our, of my life. But meeting him now in Austin is the best moment. And then he touched my arm, which was so appreciating, <laughs> you know, like he felt like how emotional it is for me. And <clears throat> and when he was gone, like when he stepped into his car, I had to turn around and I started to cry immediately because it meant so, so much. But, this, this, but then Desiree had to turn me around again because Lewis was in his car, um, pulled down the window and waved at us to say yeah. goodbye. And that was like, oh, oh my God, I can't live anymore. This, this was, that was too much. So, um, yeah, it, it, was, it was just a fascinating moment to, to be with him there alone, tell him the story. And, um, yeah. I, I, I still could cry when I when I talk about it. It was it was the best moment, really. That sounds like such a special moment, and I feel like I feel like all the drivers really appreciate their fans, but Lewis definitely appreciates them the most, and would make that minute and a half interaction feel so special. So I'm so happy for you guys. I'm so envious you got to have that moment, and the picture is great too to commemorate it. Um, but that's that definitely sounds like an amazing experience. Yeah. It was. What is for you, Desiree? Mm, I think, like, content creator wise, it was our trip to Miami with CMC Motorsports and the Formula E collaboration. Because this, this Miami trip, we, we asked for it, but we didn't think it could come true. And that really shows us you can, all, you can only achieve a goal if you set it and ask for it. Um, and the Formula E collaboration, it was also a dream come true because our, our work was seen and appreciated by one of the biggest motorsport series in the world. And it was, of course, also a good reference for us, for our work. And um, it, it was also, I think, the first experience for us that everything was organized for us and we just had to be there. And smile <laughs> it was smile. very luxury <laughs> yeah it was very luxury for us um yeah we, we really appreciated that yeah that that also sounds amazing and the content from that was great too but also what a like yeah. such a special kind of experience and i feel like that really solidifies you as a creator in this industry too like did you feel a little bit of imposter syndrome almost like i can't believe this is happening and i can't believe we're here and we get to do this Absolutely. We, we always think mm, our content is not good enough. Why do they want to work with us? <laughs> There's a lot, yeah. lot of self-doubt always, but I think every creator has that or every one who is um, about to or who, who's working for a startup, etc. that you always doubt your idea, like if it's really good enough, but that's that must be part of the process. We can't be alone with that. <laughs> yeah, definitely. And I feel like 
it's almost way more special when you start kind of gaining traction and gaining opportunities when you start something that you were just passionate about, just doing it for mm -hmm. fun. Like you said, a digital kind of photo album for you guys has now become into this major kind of initiative that you get to work on, which has just been incredible. And like I said, it's been amazing to watch you guys grow because I've been watching you for a while. So it's been so awesome. <laughs> and everything that you get to do, it makes it feel like we as kind of your fans and your audience are doing it with you. So... I can't yeah, wait for you guys to have many more experiences like that. <laughs> I was kind of wondering as well, what have your experiences been like being female fans in a male dominated, dominated sport? Have you found that there's been any kind of instances where you've really noticed like, wow, okay, there is kind of like a separation between the female fans and the male fan. I was wondering what you guys have experienced in that sense. So far, I would say it's been positive. Although we know from other creators that there can also be negative aspects being a woman in a male dominated field. And we believe that this may be due to the fact that our content does not necessarily emphasize our expertise. Um, for example, we don't post any strong opinions, analysis or assessments. So we believe that the, the attack surface is therefore not so large because we, we mainly post like funny content and I mean of course there are uh, sometimes negative comments but this mainly appears or happens when the content uh, goes viral so this is like the price you pay when your content goes viral so we can deal with that <laughs> and we also think like at the same time more and more women find their way into uh, F1 or into motorsports and they are all very pleased that they found our accounts um, because a lot of accounts are run by men and I think women want to support women so um, they really feel represented when they found that when, when they find our accounts so I think we uh, like hit the sport at the, at the, at the right time mm. and also think that or I, I mean you also know that the topic females and motorsport is getting more and more traction and, and it's and the the importance in, in, is, is increasing so we therefore see a big advantage for us also in regards to um, brand partnerships which is of course like the main source of income for content creators like us and we also think that the brands they, they want to see females to also represent their diversity strategy in their company so um, we definitely see a big advantage um, of being women in that male-dominated sport. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> definitely. Mm -hmm. You guys have definitely like created kind of a path for other female creators. You make it feel like a safer space than sometimes it really is. And like you said, sometimes you only see the hate when your stuff does really well. So it's kind of like, it's almost like a sign that you are doing the right thing. If you're seeing haters, it's kind of a good thing, even though it's tough to take, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, it's also a learning process, like how, how to deal with those negative comments. I remember like one reel that went viral in 2022 after that trip to Miami. And by that time we had like 12,500 followers or so. And then that reel was about F1 traveling. And so, so many people commented, oh, well, it's just the money of their father they are spending, so Big Daddy is paying for them. And in the beginning, I was very, very angry with these comments because besides giving us this, this passion for F1, our father did nothing. I mean, he's not even interested in that sport anymore. So it was just that he gave us this passion, but not spending all the money for us traveling to races that was like from our pocket of, or like we, we did that with RAND partnerships. And as I said, it, it made me very angry in the beginning, beginning because the people just judge at you without knowing anything about you and how you got there. And then it, it took a while for me to say, okay, um, they are just there to, to spread the hate. They are not even there for getting a, a reply. They just want to say like how they feel and maybe how, um, yeah, that they're not content about their life or that, that they are envious, etc. So um, we just leave those comments now. Yeah, but yeah, it, it was a learning process. 
Yeah, definitely. And sometimes it's hard to kind of understand where someone comes from with that too, when all you're doing is posting something exciting or sharing your passion for it and trying to find kind of like-minded people that you can send and share things to. And then you receive some negative comments and it's like, what? Like, we're not doing anything wrong. But I guess, like you said, it's just a learning process and learning to kind of ignore it. And I'm sure now you've got fans that actually come to your defense in the comments as well, because they know how hard you've worked to get to where you are. They, they've watched you grow to where you are now. So, yeah, it's something to be proud of, but it definitely is a bit of a hurdle to get over, I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, these comments come from non-followers, definitely. Like the followers, like our audience, our community, they know probably the background of our story and they would never post something so negative about us because they just know it's not true. And um, in the end, we want to reach... Our, uh, our our followers, our community, give them the content and not give it to a, to a stranger who has a negative m- mind about you. So, yeah, but yeah, you have to get a perspective on that. And of course, when you're starting creating content, you you don't know that something like that could even happen to you. So, mm-hmm. yeah, <laughs> definitely, yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> um, like you said, you want to reach your fans and your kind of audience. So I was wondering now, leading to my next question, what can your audience expect from the partnership with FanAmp? Mm-hmm. So in general, we were looking for a way to connect with our audience in a different way, because I think it was mid-2023 when we started this Instagram broadcast channel and the, the people, they liked it. I mean, it was only in German, but the people liked it. And also some people joined who, who, uh, who don't speak German and, and they, they translate all the stuff. <laughs> yeah, that's very cute. But, but they wanted to interact with us or wanted to yeah, get more content of us um, from a bit different perspective because the content we share there is like more private, which we wouldn't upload on IG stories or in the feed. But a lot of people said that they were missing the interactions. So in, I think in the, be- the beginning, they didn't know what this broadcast channel is because it was a new feature from Instagram. And they wanted to chat with the others. Like in this in this channel, they on, only us could send messages, and they could react like with a thumbs up or a heart, but they couldn't reply or yeah message uh, or, or chat with other fans. So we thought it would be great to connect our fans or our fan base, which is pretty international. We have like twelve percent from the US, and then ten percent each from UK and. Germany and we also have like 8% from Mexico, which we don't know why. <laughs> we, well, we check offense. From Mexico. Check offense, yeah. obviously. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we know that they wanted to connect and that also showed us like the community meeting that we had in December last year, um, because a lot of fans, they are like alone with their passion. They don't have F1 fans or yeah other fans like in in their family or anything like that so they want to connect uh, with others and then we found uh, the fan amp platform and i think that's the perfect platform to connect with each other and then in the second or the, the second question was which topics do we want to want to place there because obviously it shouldn't be like a copy to instagram which is not possible at all so um, we took a vote on which topics would be interested for our audience. And it was a little bit surprising that F1 news and opinions were so interesting for them because we personally, we don't um, look so much into news. Uh, of course, we read them, but it's not like we research news like one hour per day. I think we should do that now because that was like the main topic that was interesting for them. So I think what they can expect from us is definitely more space for opinions and point of views, point of views which we don't currently take so much space on uh, on our Instagram account at the moment. And yeah, we are very glad that FanEms gives us this opportunity to connect, connect in that way or in a different way with our fans. That's great. And on behalf of FanAmp, we're so excited to have you both on here. We can't wait to have your audiences a part of our app and making it a more lively space. So I'm very excited for that. Yes, we are too. (laughs) Good, I'm glad. (laughs) 
So I know that you guys are planning to go to seven races this season, but what is a dream race or circuit that you haven't been to yet? Mm. I think That's for me, it's, <laughs> it's either Mexico <laughs> or Melbourne. Um, I never came up with Melbourne, but recently um, someone told me that it's so it's such a great experience there to be there in this park and that the atmosphere is just incredible. And of course, it's at the beginning of the season, so it's always very exciting to be at a race that's in the uh, yeah that's very early in the season. Um, and also, Melbourne would be like a one and a half day trip or so for us from Germany. So it would be like literally flying around the world into the other end of the world. That would be, of course, in a very exciting journey itself. You know, to not only be for a Formula One trip, but also on a re very very long. A flight and see um, yeah how it is at another uh, continent actually and o not only to be there like just for the race week or so but I think I would spend there some more time as well just to get used to the <laughs> to the other uh, time zone as well <laughs> and establish a new sl a sleeping habit so um, yeah Melbourne would definitely be interesting for me but also Mexico probably because it just seems so um, yeah, passionate, uh, fan fantastic fans there, especially there in this arena. When the cars enter the, the arena, I think that must be an incredible f feeling. So I would probably pick these two. Yeah. Yeah, I think both of those races have some of the best kind of fan atmospheres, I would say. So those are definitely top of my list as well. <laughs> so, and, and I think I, I would vote for a race that is not on the calendar yet which is Hockenheim, because we want to see a German race again and just feel like home. I mean, we, we also feel home in Austria. It's always a, a different, yeah, different feeling there because there were so many positive memories we made there. But yeah, attending a German race would be even greater, I guess. Yeah, I'm sure. And I know a lot of fans would love the return of Hockenheim. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> What, what's your favorite race that you guys have been to or favorite circuit or like best atmosphere, any of those? It was Abu Dhabi, I guess, because it was a very reasonable price for a lot of entertainment you got there because they, they had the, those after race concert and the organization was on point. The facilities were so modern. Yeah, so we would really, rec uh, we would really recommend that race, followed by Austin. Followed by Austin, yeah. Yeah, yeah that's but definitely also a good Austin and then, yeah. yeah. I mean, Spielberg, so the Austrian race, uh, it will always have a, a special place in our heart because of, obviously, as I told you, the 20, uh, 2019 story with Lewis, the picture, that was that was it. And um, also the landscape is very, very beautiful. It also has a very, very good organization and also compared to other European races, it is the best, really the best also in terms of fan engagement. I've never seen something like that before and they improve uh, year by year. Um, so if someone is looking for an, a European race, I've heard that a couple of times before, oh, I want to go to Imola, this will be my first European race. I would say, no, 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 <laughs> please don't do that. Imola is really, in, in our opinion, the worst. Better decide for Spielberg. It also has a very good price. Um, and there's most of the time better, better weather. So um, yeah, Spielberg is great. And as Desiree said, Abu, Abu Dhabi is really, a, that's, a, that's a new standard, actually, for us. Like, now our, our standards are so, so high. You know, we are flying to Bahrain next week, and I'm so, so excited to see how they do it, because personally, I think that not only the US is the future of Formula One, but also the Middle East, um, because they just organize everything different, and they have much more space. Like, if you compare it to Spa, for example, it's a very traditional racetrack, and I also... I, I get why people love it so much, but in terms of transportation, etc., and organization, it's so, so difficult there because it's not made for 250,000 fans to come there at that weekend. And of course, like spaces like Abu Dhabi or Bahrain, it's, it's a new circuit with not so much things around it, like not a city or so. So um, it's, it's much more better. Yeah, definitely. Imola was my first race. <laughs> I, I agree. I agree. In fan engagement, 
There was nothing. I went for the yeah, session. No, thanks. No, and I zero. Of it. Um, but it was great. But yes, so funny that you said that because I kind of <laughs> left the race weekend and I was like, wow, we didn't get anything that a lot of the other tracks get. There was no, there was no concerts. I also went in like 2022, kind of just coming off of COVID. So they didn't have as much, but no concerts, no kind of fan engagement zones. There was like nothing really. It's you went to go yeah. watch the sessions and then you left the track. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You know, and yes. it, was, it was very muddy on the parking lots. We had so, so much fear that we would got stuck <laughs> or slip, slide into another car or so. So we left the race early. Mm -hmm. We didn't even um, finish the race. We just left, I think, like 30 minutes before the, 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 they crossed the finish line because I said, I want to be the first one who is leaving this fucking parking lot. Yeah. <laughs> because yeah. otherwise I will crash probably. Um, and, and yeah, and, and even then it was all already very muddy from the days before mm -hmm. and it was dangerous. So yeah, yeah. not the best. No definitely not <laughs> but that's the only reason i've been to right now so i have nothing to compare it to so in my mind it was awesome so the bar is set nice and low for the next ones <laughs> um i was kind of wondering too like we mentioned you guys are masters at getting autographs and meeting the drivers what's been the best track for you guys to find the drivers in a non stalker creepy way but um kind of <laughs> locate them and get their autographs and meet them it is Austria, definitely. Um, I mean, because like over the past years, there were actually no autograph sessions anymore. I think with COVID, they just said, okay, we won't replace them. We just leave them. And this is, of course, very disappointing for fans because many want to get to meet the drivers and get autographs, of course. And in Austria, they have this green carpet event. Um, I think it's only on, on Sundays. Right, Diesel? Or is it also Saturdays? I think it's only on, on Sundays. So <clears throat> they build like a, like a green carpet uh, and put barriers on, on both sides. And then the, the fans can meet behind those fences and um, wait for the drivers. Of course, not all drivers come, but some come. So um, this is like the, the chance for, for the fans to get uh, noticed by the drivers, wave their flag, etc., ask for autographs, and so. Of course, it's very, very busy, but at least there is a possibility uh, to meet the drivers because at other race tracks, there are, of course, there are uh, there are interview sessions, etc., where the drivers are on stage, but not in that kind of way that um, the fans can really, so to say, line up and um, wait. Of course, hours and hours. That comes with meeting drivers waiting like five hours or so. Maybe also sometimes in the rain, get up at five o'clock and, and wait there for five hours. Um, so yeah, Austria was always um, very, very good in fan engagement. And I think, I hope they, that they still are uh, this, this year. Um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, that sounds amazing. I've never thought of, or I guess heard of Austria being good for fan engagement. I kind of always thought it would, or not fan engagement, meeting drivers and stuff. Mm -hmm. I always heard Australia, like Melbourne, the Melbourne Walk. Yes, so obviously. Yes. And then I think Silverstone, I feel like I heard was pretty good too. Did you mm -hmm. hear something? Yeah. yeah. They sell those inner track tickets. And yes. I think that, that's for a reasonable price. Um, mm -hmm. So you can get like closer or you can get in front of the paddock. Also, of course, with barriers. And um, the parking lot of the drivers is, is opposite. So um, you can see them. Sometimes they don't stop. But at least you can see them and scream, George, or whatever. <laughs> Sometimes they stop also. Yeah. <laughs> well, that was great, guys. Uh, I guess my last kind of thing just to finish off here would be where can everyone find you? Give a little shameless plug. And also let the people know what seven races you're going to this year. It'll be so exciting to see. Unless it's a secret. It's not a secret. Okay. I mean, it could be eight, but this is for a secret for now. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so, yeah, we are going to the first race in Bahrain, of course, mm -hmm. and um, followed by Miami, which only will be me because it's years on an internship. Imola, okay. we hope this one is better than 2022. <laughs> uh, Silverstone, Spa, Hungary and Austria. But this is only like the first half of the season. We hope that there will come more in the second half of the season. Yeah. Yes, the first half. And you can find us on Instagram, 
Pitlay Underline Twins, and the same applies for TikTok. And of course, soon in, at, at Fan Amp. Yeah. Also, the Pit Lane Twins is our channel, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> That's great, guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. That was so amazing and so fun. And I can't wait to see you guys on Fan Amp, on the app. And I hope to one day meet you guys at the track <laughs> and get some driver autographs so with you. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. <laughs> thank you.